Hello, and welcome to another edition of Weekly DevOps Hangout. Um, for those who were listening to the other one that I abruptly killed because I was having technical difficulties, apologies for that. We will start over here um, and try this again. So I'll be running the show today um, talking about Twitter Bootstrap, um, what it has to offer, um, how to create visually appealing APIs or interfaces with it, um, what it does, what it doesn't do, uh, et cetera. Uh, feel free to join the uh, actual Hangout if you want to ask questions. Um, otherwise, we will get started here once again. Uh, again, apologies for this not working the way it's supposed to be working. Uh, technology at its finest. Uh, so I will go back to the history um, with the delete the YouTube channel from before. Um, but I said Twitter or Bootstrap was created by Twitter um, initially as kind of a response to allow engineers and developers to basically rapidly create as well as prototype uh, visually appealing interfaces. Uh, it kind of comes, it stems out of the idea that developers and engineers, um, especially engineers, I'm an engineer so I can say that I guess, uh, concern themselves typically with uh, caring about the concerns of the implementation, um, the features, um, trying to get the actual uh, page up and running and less about kind of crafting the CSS or crafting the design um, or worrying about the nuances of a browser, the nuances of CSS and how to actually uh, make the design look pretty. Um, that's usually why companies hire design teams to uh, care about that work for you. So they'll go and create the design, they'll go create the CSS and then hand it off to you to basically embed it into your page and then you just go about your business. Um, so Bootstrap basically allows you to create simple HTML, um, conform to their standard, and then the interface and the consistency of the interface kind of comes for free um, using that CSS that Bootstrap provides, as well as JavaScript and a bunch of other components that Bootstrap includes. Um, this is really good for internal type tools that your design team isn't responsible for. Instead of just creating a really ugly looking tool, you can add Bootstrap on top of it, um, craft your HTML accordingly, and all of a sudden your tool looks a lot more stunning. Um, it's a lot more easier to use, more user friendly, um, and just visually appealing so it makes you want to use it. Uh, any other worry about the browsers? You don't have to worry about, well, is this IE6 or 7, or what do I have to do if it's Firefox or Chrome? You just kind of make sure your HTML is standard and everything comes for free. So what does Bootstrap provide? Assuming I can share my screen. Hey, I can share my screen. Um, the best way to do this is to showcase an actual um, example from Bootstrap. So Bootstrap has a whole site out here. Um, it's got very good documentation on it. Um, it's got all kinds of information and getting started guides and structures and whatnot. Um, and a bunch of other templates. The template I'm going to use is basically kind of a Hello World style template for fluid designs, um, which is kind of one of their big features, is the notion of being responsive as well as kind of fluid. Um, so they use media queries and CSS. Uh, they use um, a lot of percentages and a lot of CSS tricks to kind of make things flow. So if I were to resize this browser, you can see that the actual uh, page kind of morphs to it. You actually see the top navigation there actually uh, come in and out. So we have home, about contacts, and then if I start uh, minimizing the page, it all goes into a nice little pop-up, um, which works great for mobile type phones and whatnot. Same with the links. Um, everything kind of morphs automatically. So you don't have to worry um, about, well, do I have to create a mobile phone page and a desktop page and a iPad tablet page? You just craft your HTML and uh, the fluid design and responsive design of Bootstrap automatically flows for free. Um, the other big thing they have is they use a notion of a grid structure. So you, they have a 12 grid structure um, that you can align things in. So in this case, it's this spans over three of those columns. This spans over nine columns, total of 12. Um, you can subgrid that so that you have these heading sections um, split over. 4, 8, and 12, so 4, 4, and 4. Um, they always have to equal up to 12. So it allows you to not have to worry about using A tables uh, from the 1990s. You just use purely divs, 
and your um, columns kind of all flow automatically and uh, are fluid from the beginning. Um, another good example of this is not there. Is basically here's my. Nope, that's a cool page. Oh, that does. Where's my top navigation? Oh, there it is. Um, is here's a live grid system here. So you can split up between each individual column. You can do separate columns of two, three, and four, four and five, um, nine. This is actually, I guess, a nine grid column. Oh, because this is actually three over here. Um, but the total columns overall is um, over 12. Anyway, I'm happy that does that. Um, they also have a ton of different components um, in widgets. Um, so they had everything from drop downs to custom buttons to navigation bars and breadcrumbs, pagination handlers, um, and this goes on and on. And this stuff is all purely HTML driven. You just capture HTML and it automatically styles it in the appropriate manner. You don't have to worry about um, coding any kind of JavaScript or anything else for it. Um, they also have a whole ton of JavaScript based widgets um, from tabs and tooltips and modal alerts and carousels um, that is really just sometimes just one line of JavaScript and it automatically works. Sometimes you can just use um, HTML5 data attributes and it just works as well. Um, kind of differs per widget, but they have a whole slew of useful functionality to um, make it easier to create your page. Um, and also everything is um, a visual consistency. So all the fonts um, flow through, all the uh, colors are kind of matched accordingly. So it takes care of a lot of that work for you. Um, but definitely feel free to go out to that site and just browse around what Bootstrap offers. Um, they have very good documentation across everything. With that being said, let's jump into a very quick example. So I'm going to walk us through um, uh, a very simple site with no CSS or visual aesthetic, um, aesthetics and all the way up to adding Bootstrap in the fullest, making it look a lot better. And we'll kind of compare and contrast those as we go. So if I can find my IDE here, share that. So this example is basically, um, I kind of stole the idea of, we had a FIFA championship page a while ago. Um, no offense to those who kind of created it. I kind of recreated it myself. Um, it's a very simple format, but kind of going from a really simple field championship with groups and standings and schedules and whatnot, um, and kind of showing that on one page, and then we'll add Bootstrap to that and see how it morphs. But you can see this is basically just HTML. There's no styles here. There's no um, JavaScript. So this page is going to look pretty ugly um, when we initially view it. So now. Share my screen again. Just like that. So here is our very ugly page. So obviously there's nothing here too fancy. Um, just links and tables. Tables look ugly. Um, it looks like a or or a browser page from the 1970s, which obviously didn't exist back then. Um, but as you can tell, it's very ugly. So how can we add Bootstrap to this? Uh, so the first step is to add the CSS and JS libraries uh, to the actual page. So let's go back to our code here. Yeah. We'll go to sample two. I'll provide all this, these samples as well um, on my public GitHub repository, and I'll post a link to it on the uh, Google Plus page for dev chat, uh, so you can go on and look at your own time as well. So the first thing that I did here was added the uh, Bootstrap CSS uh, link. Um, I'm currently using Bootstrap's CDN that they offer off of NetDNA. Uh, you can download the Bootstrap resources and assets locally and host it locally. Uh, there's other CDNs that host Bootstrap. It's a very popular library now, so you can kind of get it as uh, you want to grab it. That's all I did right in this example. I add the base CSS, and then the very bottom of the page, 
I add both jQuery and uh, Twitter's JS files. So Twitter depends on jQuery for a lot of their JavaScript-based widgets. Um, so you have to have jQuery um, alongside it. So reference your jQuery page. Again, I'm using a CDN to host it. Reference the Bootstrap CD or Bootstrap's JS file, and you're basically done with just kind of the initial point part of um, showing off Bootstrap. So if I was to showcase this, it's not going to be much difference in the page, but you can kind of see that the fonts are a little bit better, um, and there's a little more consistency across the page. So if I look at sample two, um, and kind of compare these two, so. The base browser uses an ugly Times Roman font. Um, Bootstrap uses a nice um, Helvetica slash Arial style font. Tables lose their weird borders and use just strict borders. Um, so it's a little better looking, but still not anything of uh, coolness. Uh, so that takes us to the next step of actually kind of conforming our page to uh, the way Twitter likes to Let's go back to our code and go to sample three here and see how we go about doing that. A lot of this is really copying and pasting code um, to get to the point that you want to get it to. So is it, you never really concern yourself too much with uh, CSS styles or anything else. It's just kind of copying example HTML, pasting it into your page, and then going about your business. Um, so the first thing that Bootstrap enforces is being HTML5 compliant and using the HTML5 doc type, which is basically a simple doc type HTML, um, setting the language on the HTML tag. And that's pretty easy and standard. Um, it's also good to use a viewport, especially if you're going to be targeting mobile devices, tablet devices, browsers, etc. Um, the viewport will kind of allow the browser to know how to scale your page accordingly. Um, and then I just have a couple of styles here just to kind of make the navigation bar um, stick to a fixed position at the top of the page. Uh, this is actually taken directly out of Bootstrap's examples. Um, so I'm just copying, pasting code. Um, the next section is, if you notice a lot of Bootstrap style pages, they have the nice thick black bar at the top of the page that kind of consumes the navigation and the header. Um, this block of code is basically what triggers that. So really you're just copying a bit of code, um, set your title of your page um, or the, the brand, whatever, recognition of your page to whatever you want. Um, add your navigation link. So I moved my navigation links from the old sample. Remember over here is just in a div tag. I moved that over into a UL section um, with LI links and broke out all the different group schedules into separate links. Um, and then you use the whole fluid nature. So there's two or three core constructs in uh, Bootstrap, basically. There's the notion of containers, which is basically a kind of grouping of content, I guess. Um, there's the notion of rows, which basically each row um, has that 12 grid or 12 column grid structure to it. And then you have columns, which can span from either span one, uh, span two columns, span three columns, span nine columns, et cetera. Um, and the three kind of work together to create that fluid nature. So in this particular example, I'm putting my main content in my page in a uh, nine column span. And then if I scroll to the bottom of this, I actually have a three column right hand navigation section um, that sits inside of it well, so it gives a nice little visual appeal to it. Um, uh, makes this kind of stand out on its own. Um, and just have a couple of HTML things there. And that's really the only major differences um, in this. Oh, the other major difference is I split my standings table out into a two by two grid. So I create a new row inside of a um, previous row, and I split that row into two uh, span sixes. Um, and the result is I can have group A on the left, group B on the right, group C, group D below that. Um, but my HTML for this really didn't change too much. I just basically put inside of a span six and put the other one inside of span six. I didn't have to care about using a table um, to split between 50%, 50% or using float left or float right or any of that business. I just purely make sure it's in the right span 
and then um, it goes accordingly. So with that, um, let's take a look at what to our page. So let's jump back to my browser. And we will look at sample three. So there's our sample two, ugly. Sample three. Um, I'm just going to browse a little bigger here, so it's not doing that weird thing. So I can see that we have our top links in the nav. Um, the navigation looks a lot better, a lot cleaner. Um, our standings now look much better. Our tables still look the same, um, but they're now split across uh, kind of two columns. We have our little right-hand navigation, um, the kind of thing inside a little well that kind of makes it stand out. So already this page is drastically better than what this page was, which you had to scroll down to get to view things. Um, was a very appealing. You really couldn't see your navigation. It wasn't really standing out. Whereas this page, your navigation kind of stands directly out at you. Um, your standings are right there. You don't have to worry about scrolling down. Um, you can decrease this, and your navigation still stands out here to different groups, and it just flows much better. Um, I also have a schedule page example out here. Um, we haven't done much of this page yet, so we'll get to that in a second, make it look a little bit better. Um, but if you look at the old samples, you know, then it looks a little bit better than what those ones look like. So the next step is to, now we have a kind of a nice page layout, we have a nice initial structure, is kind of how can we beautify other parts of the uh, system. So the first step there is kind of, well, let's clean up our tables. Our tables look pretty plain. Um, they don't really stand out. They don't really offer too much. So Bootstrap has a whole table options that it can use to make your tables look better. So if we go back to our code, share this. Now we'll jump into sample four. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do here is kind of align my link. So if you remember from that previous page, um, I had the title of group A, and then I had a link underneath that for schedules and results. I'm going to actually pull those apart to have one on the left and one on the right. Um, so there's a class in Bootstrap called pull dash your left or right, and it will pull that content accordingly. Um, it basically equivalents itself to floating left or right. Um, it'll make it stand out. I added one little piece of style, CSS style here, just to make the schedule um, kind of the same size as the group uh, as an H3 tag. But that's really the only CSS we've done so far in delved in. Everything else has come out of these classes, including what we're going to do right now with tables. So there's all these different table classes inside of Bootstrap. You can intermix them to your heart's content. Um, the ones I'm picking is basically table marks it as a data table. Uh, Table bordered will make the all the cells have borders between them. Um, if you don't, then you'll just, you'll just have a bottom border between each row, um, but the individual column borders won't exist. Uh, table striped will stripe eat every other row, so you'll have one white, one kind of grayish, one white, one grayish. Um, and then table hover is basically, um, as you hover over a particular uh, row, it'll color that row gray, so you kind of know you can kind of see your, what row you're currently working in. Otherwise, everything else in here is basically the same HTML as we had before. One difference is I'm going to actually denote the top team in each uh, group of who's currently leading that group by uh, adding it a kind of nice green color that makes it stand out. So there's all these different uh, classes in Bootstrap, one being success, makes it green, one being air um, or being red, warning is yellow, info I think is like bluish. Um, if you look at the Bootstrap documentation, uh, they'll all be out there that you can look and see what they have. Uh, so I'm going to use green via success to make it stand out. Other than that, just doing the same thing to every table, and there's nothing else that I did in this page. But, for example, we will see how this stands out. Here's my page, there it is. So back into our sample here. So we'll go from sample three into sample four. So as you can see, if I click back, ugly tables, much better tables. Um, 
So now we got nice bold headers. Uh, here's the nice green link, so we can see that that's a top team that stands out. Um, every other row is gray versus white. If I hover over a row, it makes that row gray as well, so I can kind of see where I'm currently at in the row. Um, and then here's my actual left and right. So tie on the left, link on the right, tie on the left, link on the right. So again, we've not really done a whole lot of HTML here. We've done no, no CSS except for maybe two lines of CSS, but we've got a drastically improved UI. Um, if we compare this from our beginning UI, uh, it's not even a measure of anything. It's just it's drastically better and more usable. Um, so I said, is you use very little code, purely HTML, and your site can instantly morph into something that people actually feel comfortable using. Um, but we um, by grouping these things into tabs. So right now, you can see all your groups. Maybe this is a good design for some people, but if you had a uh, a whole ton of teams in each of these groups, or these things start going on the page, and you had a ton of groups that is, is becoming too much to deal with, you can kind of switch these to using the tabs. Um, a lot of times when you mention tabs, you're like, well, that's going to require a lot of custom JS and a lot of custom CSS, and I don't want to deal with that. Uh, we simply use HTML, and we'll go back to our code here. I'll show you this. And we get tabs pretty easily. So go up here. Uh, so here we're going to add tabs. We're going to make a section of our page tabable, basically. So it's going to organize um, that into separate tabs. The tabs are embedded inside of a unordered list. Um, and then each of the LIs is the actual one of the tabs. So we'll have a group A tab, we'll have a group B tab, a group C tab, and a group D tab, group D tag. Um, the cool thing about this is you don't have to worry about adding on click handlers so that if you click this link, open up this tab. You basically use these um, hrefs that link locally to a section. So here's my group A um, ID, which maps to this group A link. Um, group B is part on the page. And then you have these data links, in this case, data-toggle, that tells Bootstrap that, hey, this link is, um, when you click on this link, use the tab, the parent tab to cycle between the different uh, pieces of the page or to toggle that section. Um, and Bootstrap basically takes care of adding all the required JS and CSS and whatnot. Um, otherwise, all this is the same as we've always had. We just added a tab content and made this a tab pane and added an ID to it. Um, going to group B, same thing. we a tab pane. This one's not active by default, so we won't use the active tab um, or class and it has its own ID. So very little work here, but as we'll see in a second here, we get lots for free. The other thing I did in this example um, is I'm adding a right hand on the very top of the navigation um, where we had the group A, B, C, D for the schedule. I'm going to add a drop-down button. Um, again, you think of drop-down, you think of I have to add JS to make sure on click handler to open up another um, hoverable piece of content, align that properly, and you quickly just don't care about it because it gets too complicated. With Bootstrap, we just pull this content right, we use a button group, um, and we use a new button tag, and say this is going to be a button. Um, I'm going to use a blue background, so info. I could have made it a green button by using button success. I could have made it a red button with button danger or button warning for yellow button, um, up to your heart's content. I'm going to say that this button actually is going to toggle a drop-down, which will map directly to this unordered list down here. So whenever I click this button, it's going to show these links automatically. Again, no CSS, no JavaScript. It just works. So, that off. So here's my previous sample. And now we add tabs, and you can see our tabs at the very top here. So now my table stretches across the whole entire row. Um, if I had a lot more columns, this would make a lot more sense. Um, I can click through each of these. Again, remember, I didn't add any JS to do
Nick, I think you're muted. Muted. There you go. Sorry about that. I don't know how that happened. Um, I'll go back. In. Oops. So there are nice tabs here. Nice little hover effects. I can click on them, see what's in each of the groups. Um, and everything automatically works. No, no JS required, no CSS, no expertise in how any of this stuff works. You just use the HTML that Bootstrap tells you to use, and it just works. Um, at the top right, we had that little versions link that we added. So automatically it flows into our navigation on the top right. If I click on that, I get my nice drop down. Um, so I can actually go back to assemble one. Um, so we went from this very ugly looking page, I had to scroll on, not very pretty, um, not very usable. And we went to this page that is much more appealing. Um, you feel more comfortable using it just for the nature that um, looks pretty. Um, which is the case of why interfaces need to kind of look nice is the nicer your interface, the more people will want to use it. Um, so if you can make it look visually appealing, people will want to use it more, they'll feel more comfortable using it. Um, it becomes more user-friendly instantaneously. And by using Bootstrap, you do very little work and it all comes for um, free, basically. So remember I was talking about the schedule page. So if I go back to the early schedule page. So um, here I can enter scores. I could reset a score to its default. I could submit scores if I wanted to and update everything. Um, I have my standings link. Again, not a very pretty page. Um, but by adding buttons inside of this, um, I can add a red button over here using button danger. And now that link looks much more like harmful. Like if I click it, it's going to do something bad to the system. In this case, it's going to erase that score potentially. Um, my blue link down here is looks like it wants to be clicked, um, which is what submit buttons are for. So you can use these nice CSS styles and get these nice looking buttons um, with nice little gradients attached to them. You don't have to worry about uh, handcrafting that. You just use the correct style and all the, uh, the buttons just come for free. And it, just, it, it makes more sense from a user standpoint that they know that, oh, I want to stay away from things that are red because that might harm the system. But if I want to do it, then I'll click on it if I need to. Um, but that's basically all Bootstrap is. It's a, Bootstrap is incredibly easy to use. Um, to be honest, I actually created all five of these samples um, in a matter of two hours this morning from 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock. Uh, so it's not a whole lot of work here. It's really a lot of copying and pasting. You go to the Bootstrap site, you grab the um, example. They have all their nice examples all in here, all the markup. You got the markup, you paste it into your page, you change the titles and the links and whatnot, and you refresh your page, and you're good to go. Um, so there's not a whole lot of real coding. It's a lot of copying, it's a lot of pasting, and, but your resulting interface is drastically cleaner. Um, so there's just a ton of content out here that is usable. Um, from simple base CSS stuff with your headings, um, your different emphasis tags, and your bold tags, and italics. As long as you kind of conform to HTML5 standards, you'll get a lot for free. Um, and as you need to add things, you can add um, different navigation sections and breadcrumbs. Um, so the documentation out there is very well done. So I encourage you to kind of walk through this and just view things and get familiar with it. Um, It'll definitely make your interfaces look much better. Um, I actually had uh, a coworker the other day show me a demo of something that was kind of very um, ugly looking that he built overnight. And I said, why don't you just add Bootstrap to this and make it look a lot better? He went home that night, added Bootstrap to it, took him very little effort. When he came back the next day with his demo, the demo looked shockingly better. And it was actually like, wow, this is actually a almost production style system that we have with using very little work. And if you need to customize things with Bootstrap, um, you can kind of customize anything to your heart's content. Uh, you can start changing your variable, um, your different topography and your fonts to your different actual colors and things. So if you're very good with colors and aesthetics and whatnot, you can start changing things and morph this into kind of your Bootstrap for your system. Um, but the base Bootstrap works for most things, especially for in-house tools, it works great. Um, 
But I said, definitely go uh, walk around the site, see what it has to offer. Um, I, it's made a lot of the tools I've built uh, much better. Um, I said, I'll post all of these samples out to my public GitHub repository. Um, I'll, I'll upload them sometime today. Post that link back to the dev chat page. So if you don't follow the dev chat Google Plus page, um, it's recommended that you do that so you can kind of follow all these, this feedback and links and whatnot and stay tuned for future topics that Brian Jackson, when he returns from his uh, conference, I'm sure we'll have much more to share and discuss. That is all I have for today on Twitter Bootstrap. Um, I can get into much more depth, so if people are interested in learning more about Bootstrap um, and you'd like to have a follow-on session that kind of digs into some of the more advanced constructs of modal dialogues, um, their navigational constructs, and whatnot, uh, let me know. Uh, post comments back to the dev chat Google Plus page. Um, and if we get enough responses, then I'll host another one of these and get a little more advanced into what you can really do with Bootstrap with adding very little code to it. Otherwise, I'll open things up for Q&A. If anyone has any questions, I can take those. Can you, can you switch um, the, the horse tool? I am not switching any tools. That is for developers and engineers to learn how this stuff works and to take it and go with it. <laughs> I have enough things to do on my plate. That's true. No. <coughs> Joking. You learn by doing, not by having people do it for you. We'll have Brendan do it. <laughs> He's not even here, I don't think. No. Okay, well, thanks, everyone, for joining. Um, I hope you learned something. I hope you uh, learned to use Bootstrap. If you have questions on the side, um, feel free to come ask me, email me, call me, text me. Uh, don't text me, I don't have text. Uh, reply to me on Twitter, Google+, whatever. Um, I'll get back to you and get you the answers you need. Otherwise, thanks for attending. Thanks, and Nick. We'll see you next week. See ya.